Hi everyone, it's Sabrina, and I wanted to answer a question that I got from a parent that was about their child lining up their favorite toys. Now I see this a lot with kids that have autism. They'll take their favorite toys, usually cars, but it could be any toy or any appliance, stickers, and they'll line them up in a row. And they may do this over and over again. And then when the parent comes and rearranges the line or tries to engage the child, the child might have a big tantrum. So first of all, we want to think, huh, why is my child doing this? What, what does this serve for my child to be lining up their toys in a row? So if you think about it, if your child has your fa their favorite toys, they're getting a sense of control, they're getting a sense of predictability, and it's also a self-soothing mechanism. So when they're able to line up their favorite toys, they can control the order, they can look at all of their toys in a row, and it also soothes them and calms them down to make them feel like, oh yes, I can have control and predictability over this environment. And so I know as a parent, it can be really stressful and concerning and to be like, well, they're not, they're not engaging with me. They're not functionally playing with these cars. Like what do I do? Okay. So I'm going to give you three strategies and tips so that you can work with your child on kind of building more flexibility and building more play skills and creativity so that your child is able to eventually do joint interactions with you and functionally play with the toys instead of just lining them up in a row. Okay, tip number one is follow the child's lead. Now, following the child's lead means if they're lining the toys up in a row, don't panic and take the toys away because that could cause a really big tantrum. What we want to do is follow what they're doing. They're doing this for a reason. We want to honor that, respect that, and we want to join in on the play instead of disrupting the play. So if they're lining up their cars, they got their little trucks going, you could take another car and start lining it with them. So you're actually joining in on what they're doing instead of kind of taking it apart and ruining their play. Okay, so follow the child's lead and start joining in on that play with them. Also, when you follow the child's lead, you can do some fun things like counting as well. So as they're lining up the cars, you can count one, two, three, four, and that's also kind of rhythmic and soothing and you're joining in on their play as opposed to disrupting it and taking it apart. Tip number two, change the game and create flexibility. Now what I mean by that is that if your child likes to line their cars in a row, slowly try to change it, maybe move it in a circle or you know move it in a different pattern and see if they'll allow you to do that and join in on it. So, okay, if your child is having a tantrum when you're changing up the line and doing something different, then just go back to tip number one, which is follow the child's lead. That might take a while, you know, that might take a couple days, it might take longer for them just to get comfortable with you in their space and participating with them. Just join in on what they're doing until they're comfortable enough for you to slightly change it up and for them to not have a tantrum. And the idea is to share together in the play. We wanna make this as fun and as joyful as possible and then to eventually switch it a little bit and have them join you in what you're doing and changing it up just a little bit with them. Okay, the last tip is model a new type of play. So after your child is okay with you being in their space and then you slightly change up the routine and they're still okay with that, 
then you can model a new way to play with the toy. So for instance, if you have a car, you could take the car and put it down a ramp and say, wee! And then if your child is like, whoa, that's so much fun, they might take the car and imitate you and do the same thing. And then you're showing, you're showing your child, look, there's another way that we can play with this toy. We don't have to line them up. We can actually do something different, okay? And so, you know, if it's if they have a car, you can make it go down the ramp. If it's letters, you could start, you know, stacking the letters one on top of each other, making a little column and then knocking it down. So the idea is to break up the rigidity. We're trying to become more flexible and show the child that there's other ways to play with these toys, that we can do many different things with the toys. And you could just take one way and model it for them and then see if they will imitate that. All right, you guys, well, I hope that these tips were helpful for you. Try them out, see how it works. And if you have any more questions for me, you can email me down below. I'll um, leave my email address so that if you have questions, send me a question and I can try to answer it for you in a video. Um, I'm also offering a group circle time on Saturdays, Saturday mornings from 10 to 10.30. It's on Zoom for three to five year olds that are working on language development. We do songs, we do story time, I have some fun activities and I would love to see you there. And yeah, so until next time, have a wonderful day and I will talk to you later, bye.